49 weeks na lang po. 500 years na ang ating isa celebrate regarding our gift of Catholic faith nung tinanggap ni Princess Juana at ng kanyang asawang hari humabon ang binyag mula kila Magellan. So nasa ikaapat po tayong yugto ng 52-week reflection in preparation for the 500th anniversary. Ang tawag po natin sa ating programa, Grateful for the Catholic Faith, Passing it on to the next generation. Bago po ang lahat, atin munang pakinggan ang salita ng Diyos. Be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself the Savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot, or wrinkle, or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the Church. In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. Mula sa salita ng Diyos galing kay San Pablo, ating nakita na ito pa lang si San Pablo to pag siya nagsusulat. Sa kapangkaraniwan, di ba? Siyempre, meron kang greetings, meron kang yung katawan ng sulat, tapos may final salutation sa ending. Ang maganda po sa kanyang sulat ay yung kanyang gitna, yung body of the letter, may two parts yan. Ang una ay doktrina. Pangaral. Sino ba talaga si Jesus? At madalas ang kanyang ipinapangaral ay si Kristo'y namatay, si Kristo'y muling nabuhay. Dahil sa doktrina yan, yan po ang parang kanyang huwaran, paradigm, example, model ng pamumuhay. Yun po ang second part, pamumuhay kristyano. At kung talagang tayo'y susunod kay Kristo from the doctrine that we have received from Paul, mamumuhay tayo ng tama sapagkat si Kristo muling nabuhay. Ano naman po ang gustong sabihin ng ating reading ng Colossians chapter 3 verses 21 to 33 ka parang nung ating narinig na binabasa kanina. Alam nyo, sa ating panahon, meron doon salita na parang masama yata ang tunog lana sa mga feminista. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands. Parang yung word subordination, ang hirap yata tanggapin ng maraming babae ngayon, maraming as asawang babae. Pero alam nyo, baka nakaligtaan nila na yun ay verse 22. Ang verse 21 po ay be subordinate to Jesus Christ. Let your minds be subordinate to Jesus Christ. Ah, ang premise po pala ay hindi ang babae subordinate sa asawa. Pati ang asawa at ang babae ngayon ay una muna subordinated to Christ. Ngayon, yung subordination ng babae na yan, ng asawang babae, meron syempre relationship dun nga kay Kristo. Kasi nga po, tayong simbahan 
ang tawag po sa atin ay the bride of Christ, we are subordinate to Christ because He is the head. Pero inuri din, nilagyan din ng kaurian ni San Pablo, sino naman yung asawang lalaki? Love your wives. Kabuka ni Kristo nagmahal sa simbahan, nag-alay pa nga po na kanyang buhay para sa simbahan. So, totoo yun. May reciprocity between husband and wife. Kung titignan natin si Yeso Kristo, ang kanyang pamumuhay ay bigay todo sa kanyang asawa. Ang asawa niyang, ang kanyang katawan, ang simbahan. Samantalang, ang kanyang katawan, nagpapa sukob ng pinapayagan niyang mamuno. Kaya nga, head eh. Head of the body is Christ. So, meron pong parang orderliness. Meron pong head may body. And that is the paradigm, the model na sinasabi ni San Pablo na tutunan niya tungkol kay Kristo. Hindi lang yun mga kapatid eh. Ang model ng pag-aasawa ng kagaya ng relationship ni Kristo at ng simbahan, ng simbahan called church, ito po ay galing din sa relationship ng Santisima Trinidad. Ang Santisima Trinidad ay pamilya din. Kamukha ng pamilya ni Jesus, siya at ang kanyang katawan, tayong lahat na mga binyagan. At sa bawat pamilya po, kasi nga po ito ay uh, merong relasyon sa isa't isa, merong palaging namumuno. There is an authority in every community. May headship po because it makes things orderly. Alam niyo po ba, di ba? Cleanliness is next to godliness. And cleanliness normally is orderliness. So when we are godly, it's also because we follow an order in life. But napakaganda ng buhay ng Santisima Trinidad? There is also orderliness. Di ba? May father. Ano tawag natin sa father? First person. Ano tawag natin sa anak at sa Espiritu Santo? Second and third person. O di ba may order? Hindi po tawag dyan hierarchy eh. May kaayusan po ang buhay ng Santisima. Bawat pamilya po, merong headship. May members para po may kaayusan. Kasi kailangan po sa isang pamilya, sa isang pamilyang gustong mabuhay ng tama, meron silang namumuno. May nagpapasimuno. Meron talagang nangangasiwa. Actually, headship po, authority, is a great burden. At ang burden na to, sad to say, kadalasan sa mga lalaki sa pamilya, akala niya okay na yung magtrabaho siya, tapos bigay niya sweldo niya sa kanya asawa, tapos wala na siyang pakialam sa mga bata, hindi ho, hindi ho, hindi ho. Orderliness means the burden of being responsible for the whole family, not just for the food, not just for the education, not just for the shelter and clothing, but yung kaayusan po ng buong pamilya. Kaya nga po dito, if a woman, as the wife, eh tunay siyang ulirang asawa, susunod ang kanyang mga anak. If they respect, if she respects rather the father, her husband, the children will respect their dad. Yun po. Kaya nga sabi po ni Pope Francis, Order in the family is order in society. Alam nyo, sad to say, sa ating buhay ngayon, no? ang gulo-gulo. Ang dami pong gulo sa ating lipunan. Hindi kaya nakaugat yan kasi magugulo din ang ating mga pamilya. Ito nga po ang gusto nating gawin dito sa 52-week preparation for the anniversary of the gift of our Catholic faith. Dahil po tayo sumusunod kay Heso Kristo na ibinigay sa atin at siyang ating huwaran, siya anak ng Diyos at tayo anak din ng Diyos, 
Tularan natin the way he lived. And he lived a life of service. And that is the first and foremost characteristic of the husband and the father of the family. He takes the leadership, but he takes also the responsibility of service. Alam nyo, no? Ang hirap siguro ng isang asawa ng babae to submit to an abusive husband. Naloloko, susugal, wala sa bahay, late na dumating, di mo alam kung saan galing. Ang hirap po mag-submit. Mag, mag Pero ang hirap din po siguro sa lalaki umuwi ng bahay kung yung kanyang asawa. Wala namang pakialam sa kanya. Hindi naman siya ginagalang bilang namumuno sa bahay. Reciprocal po yan eh. And what is that reciprocity? The reciprocity of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Ang Ama po ang may plano. Ang tawag sa Kanya, the Father's will. Siya po may kalooban. Siya po ang merong disenyo. At ang Kanyang dalawang kamay, sabi ni Saint Irideus, ang action people, persons sa buhay ng Santisima Trinidad ay ang kanyang anak na nagbibigay liwanag, nagpapangaral. At ang Espiritu Santo na yung pangaral ng kanyang anak isinasa puso, gives the warmth, the enlivenment for the spirit of human persons to accept the truth that comes from Christ. This is the orderliness in God. And there is harmony, there is peace. Yun po, between husband and wife, there must be order. And definitely, there will be order in the family, among their children, in relationship to them. There will be order in society. With this, she segue po tayo to a life testimony. Maghahanap po ako ng isang ama, ng isang ulirang ama para ipahiwatig sa atin na talagang maayos, mabuti, maigi to take the headship, that responsibility, to exercise it. Pero syempre, he requires, he demands a good relationship with his wife that is of subordination, and respect and reverence so that their children will follow suit. Order po ah, in the family is order in society. I know of a man by the name of Josue who was stricken with polio at the age of two. But he was determined to walk without crutches and so every day he would swim in a nearby river. And this is despite his mother's prohibition. But when he is caught, he got a spanking. This young boy showed signs of high intellectual capacities. So his older brother by eight years sent him to Manila to study high school in the capital city. While the first year of studies went without a hitch, the next three years were really, really difficult. The brother who paid for his school fees got married and sent him a one-way ticket to get back home because he has no more money to give him for his expenses in Manila. Just like his determination to walk without crutches, he did not go back. He pushed a cart full of vegetables from Divisoria and brought it to his neighborhood and sold there with a the game. He did this not only in summer but the whole year of second year and another summer thereafter. So with that, he took third year in the morning and fourth year high school in the afternoon of the same year. When he presented himself for graduation, the principal did not allow him for what he did. He was not given a diploma. He was told to wait for another year. Undeterred with the same determination, 
he took to the streets again with his old cartwheel and again sold vegetables. Then he went for pre-law studies and with the help of Kababayans from Negros, Josue pursued his studies at the Philippine Law School. At the age of 21, he got hired as a clerk and messenger boy at the Insular Life Assurance Company. And through 44 years of dedicated service, he rose to the rank of general manager, then later legal counsel, until he became a corporate secretary of the Ayala Group of Companies. He retired at the age of 61. While he met his future wife in 1937, war broke out and only in 1950, after nearly 11 years of not seeing each other, he met his wife again, pursued her like his old determined ways every single weekend until she would say yes to his proposal. They got married January 21 and they had their first baby 10 months after by the name of Enrique. Two years later, was born another son. His name, Francis Vincent. That man is my dad. Family life was greatly enlivened by the way daddy executed household leadership. The most important reminiscence I have was every Sunday started with a marching band music to rouse everyone from sleep. And so we dressed up because the first day of the activity of Sunday is to go to Mass. But he made it interesting to us and my brother, going to different churches every Sunday, like introducing us to the Benedictines of San Beda Mendiola because they were very good in singing, or telling us the historical meaning of the San Sebastian Church, the first steel church of the Philippines. But unforgettable for me and my brother were the parks and the swings and the ice cream of Malate and Ermita. We moved to Makati in 1963 when Insular Life got its new home in the new commercial and business district developed by the Ayalas. And so there was greater, um, we could say, there was greater interaction between us, my mother, my father, my brother and I, because no traffic, we took breakfast together at around 6.15, and about 6.45, we'll bring him to the office in Ayala Avenue and we are put to Don Bosco, Makati. But, but by 12 noon, our driver will pick us up, bring us to Insular Life to pick up Dad, have lunch. And at 12.45, do the same routine, bring my dad, and then bring us just in time for the 1 o'clock bell in Don Bosco, Makati. Dinner was also the same, a daily meeting place of the family of four. By that time, my dad became very serviceful to a parish called San Ildefonso in, in Pio del Pilar, Makati. He was the first lay commentator, the lector of the parish, headed by Father Rizzato. When I entered the minor seminary and saw that the parish of Father Isato was having many more lay collaborators, he transferred to a nearby public chapel at Colegio de Santa Rosa. And there, with consistency and determination, he took communion each day until he was hospitalized August 30, 1975. The doctor said he would really have a massive heart attack. In the mid-morning of September 4, 1975, 
despite the presence of several doctors and nurses, my dad, our dad, went to his Lord and Creator. He was just 69 years old. A full life, humble from the beginnings, unpretentious to the very end. And he told us, his boys, he would not be able to give us any wealth except simply his good name in the society where he moved about. He was known as Josue, honest to the hilt, loyal beyond doubt. And for us, his children, a true family man. More than that, he lived his faith with service. He enlightened the path of the uncertain. This little testimony of mine becomes now a legacy to my nephews. Hopefully, they would remember their Lolo as to be a man of the family, loyal to the wife, very engaging in relationship with his sons, but also a, serv a servant of God in his church and an honest citizen in society.